I saw you play uh, with Jethro Tull last year on tour with Lucia Micarelli. Lucia's a New York girl, so Lucia is kind of Lucia, and, um, and she tries in some ways to disinherit her Italian ah. and Korean background. Great. But at the same time, I know she's a little bit proud of both. She's, she's a wonderful player and you know, a great person, and, and uh, she's been working with me pretty much exclusively during the last eight or nine months. You all did a cover of Led Zeppelin's Cashmere that was unbelievable and it was one of the finest concert moments I've seen. Will you be playing that this evening? We will be doing that and um, that's, that's Lucia's. Um, she's never actually recorded that, funnily enough. Uh, really? How did that come about that you two collaborate, or that you, the band it was, collaborated? It was just something that. that she'd been playing really? um, in recent months before she met us mm -hmm. and, um, and so I said, okay, well, let's, let's try that one. I mean, it's, it's a little awkward playing, for me, playing music of another classic rock artist is, mm -hmm. is always a little kind of nerve-wracking. It's a bit like being a covers mm -hmm. band, but... Um, you don't it, do many covers. Well, I mean, I, I did the orchestration yeah. for, for, um, for Kashmir, mm -hmm. which is not particularly difficult, but I, you know, I tried to give it some of the Indian swooping strings. Sure. But we try to do things that are in keeping with, with the flavor of the music and, um, and try and make it, you know, just not just a, a reproduction of what's gone before. Um, so there's, um, you know, there's a little quote from Whole Lot of Love in there and, uh, and, uh, and some cashmere, and it's really That's a vehicle good. for Lucia to, to look great on sure, stage and absolutely. sound fiery and, uh, and feisty, which she does. <laughs> to my wife a few minutes ago who said, oh yes, we've just put a new ceiling fan in the kitchen because we've been having an incredibly long, hot mm -hmm. drought spell in, in the UK at the moment. And, and so she put a new ceiling fan in to uh, just 
so she could sit and keep cool. And of course, now the now the animals have discovered it. They're all they're all in a heap underneath <laughs> in the, the ceiling fan. <laughs> and and we joke about it, but you know there are, there are, it is becoming quite. Uh, punitive, you know, for, for long-haired pets, mm -hmm. dogs and cats that, that are frankly finding it uh, the number of hot days in the year would appear in the, uh, I mean, we have four of the last five years are the hottest on record mm -hmm. in my country mm -hmm. and, and this, <laughs> this, is, um, this is pretty worrying for mm -hmm. pets as a whole because most of them aren't up to it. N neither are the trees and some of the shrubs in our garden who mm -hmm. are things that have been there literally for hundreds of years and are now suffering from drought stress mm -hmm. and uh, and I think they are a, they are a better barometer of uh, what's going on in the world. When you see a tree that's grown, you know, to be sure. 50, 60 feet high, and it's been there for two or three hundred years, and now, in on my watch, mm -hmm. you know, while I am the owner of that yeah. house and property, it's failing. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it makes me feel a little bit responsible mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. It, it, it brings a you know brings a real kind of pain mm -hmm. to my soul when I when I see that happening and, and realize that. You know, we, we have so little time to to slow down this problem, maybe to arrest it. But if we don't do anything for another 10 years, we, we, our great, great grandchildren are not going to be living on the planet that we know. Yeah. Probably the biggest reason for nations to, to go to war 100 years from now will be over water. Mm -hmm. It really? is such, such a precious resource. Wow. When you think about it, you know, we take it for granted. We turn on the tap, the faucet, yeah. whatever you call it. Um, and uh, you know we take that for granted. Yeah. We take the air we breathe for granted, even, even in a busy city. Yeah. Th things are not going to remain that way unless we do something now. You know, it's the people, us. We have to tell our politicians what we want. Yes. If we want to leave behind something where our great grandchildren can enjoy the kind of lives that we've taken for granted, we have to tell people to do something for us. You know, we have to be the ones to take the initiative. The, 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 the future is in the hands of the people in a democracy, mm -hmm. not our leaders. Well, Mr. Ian Anderson, yeah. I cannot thank you enough for your time. I know your schedule is very tight, and we just have completely enjoyed speaking with you. It's been a pure delight, and best of wishes to you tonight and the rest of your tour, and thank you again so much. Well, it's very kind of you, and we, I hope to be on stage a benign and uh, positive force for good. Mm -hmm.